Welcome back. Today I have a product Creality has barely spoken about. After a ridiculous sale on AliExpress and a month of shipping, I've got the Nebula Smart Kit. This pad will allow owners of the Ender Series printers to unlock high-speed printing through an easy-to-follow clipper interface. While this sounds amazing on paper, the lackluster execution couldn't have been more expected. Let's see what's included in the kit. Of course, there's the Nebula pad itself. This comes included also on the undermarketed Ender 3 V3KE or Clipper Edition. The Nebula camera is in the box. I rather like this as it functions as a generic USB camera, but also includes adjustable focus. A cool looking mini FlexiPod is also included to set up the camera wherever you like. Kind of a nice touch. Next, we have a USB drive that isn't branded with Creality in any way, instead reading AnyTac. I'll just jam this into the PC and see what it has to offer. Next is a bag of screws and mounting hardware. But what I'm most intrigued by is this little G-Force sensor attached to a splitter cable. This ought to be interesting. Taking a look in the manual, it suggests that the USB-C connection will go to the Nebula pad itself, while the USB-A connector should be plugged into a 5 volt power supply. There is little to no information about the sensor in the manual, which was also stapled incorrectly mixing the English and Chinese versions of the booklet. My general understanding is that it needs to be oriented according to the XYZ symbols on the top of it. The manual does, however, include a diagram of how to mount the sensor. It needs to be attached to a conveniently placed bracket just above the touch probe. That would be great, except my Creality Sprite Pro hot end does not have this bracket, nor does my stock hot end, and it wasn't included in the kit at all. It's almost as if Creality designed this to be used with one specific printer, but decided to market it as compatible with all. This will be important later. Thankfully, I own a 3D printer and I can make parts for myself. I designed a little bracket in Fusion 360 that would screw into the existing touch probe screws and have an elevated platform to attach the G-Force sensor. This will keep it perfectly aligned to the axes and provide accurate readings. If you also have a Sprite Pro, I'll include a link to this bracket in the description. But spoiler alert, you probably won't need it because you may not want this kit to begin with. Let's get to that. I attach the probe to my hot end and reattach to the printing gantry. I have a custom designed cable hanger that keeps cables out of the way while also allowing them freedom of motion along the x-axis to follow the hot end. I'll be routing the sensor cable through here as well. I'll disconnect my factory LCD screen as the rainbow colored serial cable is what will be used to communicate between pad and printer. You'll notice a small problem. The mount for this screen is different and both use a female connection. Don't worry about this right now, as included in the USB drive is an STL for a screen holder, and the mounting hardware is in the bag. I'll connect the serial cable as well as the USB-C, both of these provide power to the display, but it isn't time to turn on the printer just yet. This boot screen is really pretty, but it also takes a good 3-5 to five full minutes to start. Seriously, go grab a snack. Eventually, we'll reach the language selection screen. Even if English is already highlighted, you'll need to tap it once before proceeding or it will default back into Chinese. On the next page is a license agreement that basically says they'll use your data for as much marketing as possible. Classic user agreement stuff. Next is a page I found quite confusing. It instructs you to go to their download page and download the firmware. It doesn't specify what firmware or download page, and the only one for the Nebula pad is a .img file. So I download that and copy it to my printer's SD card and turned it on as instructed. On this page, we'll need to select which printer I'll be connecting to. Mine is an Ender 3 V2 with a CR Touch using a 4.2.2 board. After hanging at the connecting screen for a while, it came up with this error. Strange, I thought. After a day of trial and error, I realized that the firmware that needs to be on the SD card is actually the .bin file included on the USB drive. This file is nowhere else that I can find. Now the connection will establish properly and we can proceed to the next step, which is a self-check. The first test is the hot end fan. There is no reason to tap detect as you can clearly see it's rotating when the printer is on. The next one checks the part cooling fan. In my case, this caused the fan to run poorly and sound strange, but I went to proceed anyway. Next was a homing test. This was easy enough. The printer goes through the motions and homes the X, Y, and Z axes without much complaint. Now comes the Z offset calibration. I have mine memorized and it's negative 3.28. Unfortunately, this UI only allows you to enter increments between 1 and negative 1. So I'll need to enter negative 1 three times, followed by negative 0.28 
to achieve my offset. Strange programming choices, but I'm a hardware guy and in no place to judge. The next step is a bed leveling wizard. This will probe the four corners and help you tram the bed. Mine is already trammed, so I'll skip this step. Now we enter bed probing, where the touch sensor will make a virtual mesh of your printing surface. This is great for increasing accuracy and critical for high speed printing. This went super well. The hot end immediately crashed into the bed, requiring complete retramming of the gantry and bed. This is because there is nowhere to set extruder offsets in the menu. Moving right along, I'll select that I have a bed slinger style printer where the bed moves along the Y axes rather than the Z axes like a Core XY system. Calibrating the G sensor is next, I'll select that it's already installed and begin the test. This causes the hot end to rapidly cycle back and forth along the X axes, essentially vibrating. When I say vibrating, I mean really shaking the entire printer, but let it run, it needs to calibrate. The Y axis calibration is next, this does the same vibration test along the Y axis. Because the bed is so much heavier than the hot end, this test is violent and loud. Do not attempt to stabilize the printer, but be prepared to catch it if it starts to shake itself off the table. Finally, the self-test and setup is complete. We have entered the main operating system of the Nebula Pad. The first screen is simply a live information readout of temperatures. The movement and temperature controls are the default on the settings tab. Next is memory. These are where your G-code files are stored. It's important to note it cannot read files from the micro SD card on your printer. The gear indicates the system settings menu. The small Android is just a help menu that has QR codes leading to generic FAQs. Finally, I could get to printing. I was firing up a Benchy set to print at 150 millimeters a second, and this looked awesome. It was really cool to see my printer moving so rapidly, absolutely tearing around corners and infilling faster than I'd ever seen. The one fatal flaw though was an extrusion. You see, the Ender 3 V2 has a default E-step of 93. The Sprite Pro has a default of 424.9, and the Nebula Pad has a completely unknown default. This means that I'm extruding filament at an absolutely tiny fraction of what's required. My hot end is barely dribbling any filament out at all. Even at the maximum allowed 300% flow adjustment, it just wasn't enough. There is nowhere to set the e-steps on the Nebula Pad or through the Creality Cloud interface. Considering the default 93 of this printer is usually not even the correct value once the printer is assembled, this makes the Nebula Pad essentially useless. The pad also ignores M92 G-code commands that would change extrusion steps, attempts to get access via SSH when unsuccessfully. As a last ditch effort, I attempted to slice through Creality Cloud with an Ender 3 V3 KE profile, considering it also uses a direct drive extruder, not unlike the Sprite. While this got it closer, it still wouldn't work. As it stands right now, this device is unusable to me. Creality has barely marketed this device and barely offers any support. Their customer service staff instructed me to brush the firmware onto the machine. So for now, I'll set this aside until more information is available. If you picked up a Nebula pad and have it up and running, let me know in the comments how you did it. It's entirely possible I missed something. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and of course, I'll see you next time.